some of our remote viewers have concluded that yes, it's going to happen this time. That we and it will be on the same side of the sun at the same time. And if the remote viewer, and they're getting their information from ETs, from sources within the US, U.S. government that tell me that yes, they are deeply concerned about it and they're worried sick about it and they don't know what to do about it. What, what could the government or anyone else tell you? What could they say to you? Would, would they tell you that grab your hat, dig a hole, hang on? He says, oh, it seems to be a rather nice planet and we know about it and it, all we need to do is name it. And then bless his heart, you know, he, he'd never had a heart problem, but within a year he was dead with a heart attack. Incredible race of humans does have a future and it is in the stars. Mm -hmm. And we are going out there to reclaim our rightful place. It's kind of amusing considering that the last time we met, I told you that it was to be my last interview. And here I am again. And you know, how can I explain that? We have gotten the most incredible response to your interview. I, I have to say it's, it's actually been the most popular of all of our interviews. Oh, and nice I think there's a reason for that. Well, oh, thank you. Um, I, I think that in many ways you, you put yourself on the line and you, you actually embody the curiosity that was like rampant in all of us. And you did it at a time when, um, and in the military no less, and you broke rules and you, you kind of stuck it out and you just, you're like, you just, uh, I don't know, a one-man disclosure project, as far as I'm concerned. Well, thank you, Carrie. That's very kind of you to say that. But let me explain something. I was a normal human being for a big, big portion of my life. You know, I was a career military and uh, no-nonsense kind. I wore a crew cut. When I learned what I learned in 1963, 64, 65, it, it changed my life, it changed my way of thinking, and I became obsessed with what I had learned. And over the years, I've learned so much more. And as I may have mentioned to you earlier, I, I learned a little bit, I wanted more. You know, talk about an addiction. When you start learning some things about a subject that is so profound, the more I learned, the more I wanted to know, and the more I wanted to know, the more I learned, and the more I learned, the more obsessed I became. And uh, you talk about losing a paradigm. My old paradigm literally crumbled around my knees. You know, the world that I thought I lived in, is I learned, was not the world that I lived in. And the reality that I looked around and thought I saw was not the reality that exists that much of what we see is an illusion. It, it's, it's a result of our own illusions. We, <clears throat> we humans sometimes, rather, rather than face reality, we create a little, little world of our own. You know, we get up and go to work, we raise the kids, we buy a house, buy a car, take a vacation, go on about our lives, try to save money, put a little in the bank for the kids' college, and, and, and live a normal life. And then I learned that there's no such thing as a normal life, that the world that exists is not at all what we think it is. And the more I learned, as I said, uh, my, my old paradigm crashed around my knees, and uh, I'm sitting here in front of you uh, as, a, as a human wreck, you might say, you know, as to what I used to be. Because I lived in a world that was kind of cut and dried. Oh, you know, do this, do that, you pay your bills. You, it's not that way at all.